namely that antidepressants often do not do what they promise and are in fact causing harm to many. Uh, Dr. Sick Steve Hoetze is suing tired. over Obamacare's employer mandate. It's time for a wellness revolution. a wellness revolution. Brought to you by Hoetze Health and Wellness Center. Honest discussion on maintaining health and wellness naturally to enjoy a better quality of life. He's the doctor fighting to let you keep your doctor. In. Now, Dr. Stephen Hoetze. Welcome to Dr. Hoetze's Wellness Revolution. I'm Stacey Banfield here with Dr. Stephen Hoetze, founder of the Hoetze Health and Wellness Center. And as always, you can download our fantastic podcast. Day or night, all you have to do is go to HoetzePodcast.com. That's H-O-T-Z-E Podcast.com. Well, Dr. Hoetze, we've got a great show today. We have got a very special guest, longtime friend of yours, Judy Kirshner. And I know Judy Kirshner is going to update us on all of her important work mission work uh, that some people might not be familiar with. So it's going to be a great show. Thank you so much, Stacy, and thank each one of you for joining us today on Dr. Hotsey's Wellness Revolution. I am so pleased to have as our guest on our program today a longtime friend and guest of ours at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center since 1989. It's a long time. Judy Kirshner. <laughs> and Judy... Has got a wonderful life story on what happened to her starting back in 89 when she came to see us. Shortly thereafter, God gave her a vision for a ministry, and she is now the founder and executive director of New Life School, which is in Guatemala, outside of Antigua, Guatemala, up in a little village, a Mayan village that's on top of a a volcano, a, a, an old volcano that's extinct, of course. And the name of the city is Santa Maria de Jesus. <laughs> and there she operates a private school giving free care to individuals in the Mayan society who are considered despicable and, and they're turned out because they have disabilities, anything from hearing disabilities, they're blind, they're crippled. They're lame. They're mentally not sharp. And she had a heart for these kids when she saw them. So, Judy, welcome to our program today. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you on here. So, Judy, tell us, when were you first exposed to the situation of these children in Santa Maria de Jesus down in Guatemala? How, how long ago was that when you first were introduced? In 1996. Okay. And so tell us about and that. What happened? How did you happen to be down there? I went on a short-term mission trip in 1992 to Guatemala that it wasn't exactly to that same village, but God used that to uh, for me to allow him to have total control of my life. And I felt that one day I, I could do mission work. And in four years, my life had changed, and I was headed to Guatemala to study Spanish, knowing I was full-time on the mission field. So when, and, did, you, when did you find about, out about these young children that really, that for some reason they have health issues or physical mm -hmm. issues that make them handicapped in the families up there consider that a blight on the family name Absolutely. and they hide yes. these kids don't they tell me yes. when did you find out about those poor children well my background is nursing and you were at Shriners Hospital right. Orthopedic Pediatrics in Houston and so when I started working in a Mayan village with Guatemalan doctors I started seeing children with the same disabilities as the ones at Shriners and realizing they had no resources if they needed a walker, a wheelchair. They had nothing except uh, the discrimination from everyone else in the village. And then realizing when a girl that I'd met at three years old, she had spina bifida. When she was six, she wanted to go to school and was turned down by the various schools in the town. And I realized that children with different abilities weren't could there was no education available for, for those them. With, for those with disabilities. Yes. Huh? And so, so what did that lead you to do? So that's you were thinking about this mm -hmm. from 1996 to 2000. It was growing in your heart. How did you establish your first school, and how did you 
how were you accepted in this village? You're a here's a white <laughs> gringo woman from <laughs> really? from Houston, Texas, and all of a sudden you're going to end up in this Indian village <laughs> up on the top of a volcano. That's true. I mean, without anybody else to help you, just <laughs> you and you alone, and you just show up and say, "I'm here." So how did that happen? Well, I actually started up there alongside Guatemalan doctors. And so I gained acceptance with time that I was somebody that didn't leave, that I cared, and my commitment of time showed them that. And they began opening their lives to me and becoming my friend. And so it, it was a slow process. And I started the school with eight children, one teacher, and that was just walking with a Guatemalan man looking for children to put in the first class. People were ignoring me, pretty, pretty much ignoring me. And then as the school grew every year, the, the children would go to another level of education and we would bring more in at the bottom until now we have 100 children in the primary school yearly. K through sixth grade. Yes. Right. And you operated initially just in a little Mm -hmm. apartment. One room. One room school. Yes, one teacher and eight children. Wow. And yes. uh, You ended up building your, mm -hmm. the school, you ended up building a two or three story building. How how tall is the building? Three story building. Right. Because there wasn't enough land to to have a one story building. And so... Uh, in designing the building, I put an elevator shaft. Wow. Because I wanted every child to have access to every part of the school. Right. And people would say, well, where are you going to get that elevator? So, well, if I don't have the shaft, I'll never <laughs> get an elevator. That's right. <laughs> if I build it, it, it will come. Now, when and did, it was. Yeah. When did, you, <laughs> when, did you build, when did you build the building? Built the building in 2006. 2006. Yes, we started the school in 2000, and we T- were in a small home until 2007. Right. When we moved into the new building. And how many square feet do you have in that building? It's about um, 3,300 per floor. So about 10,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. Tell me this, how do you buy land and get title? Do they have titles for the land that you get titled? Absolutely. Is that right? There aren't restrictions wow. for people that aren't citizens to buy land. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And so now you have a total of 100 children in, in school. Mm-hmm. And so what has happened to the kids that have graduated and gone on to have you had any that have gone on to any type of further education? Mm-hmm. One of the ladies that started with you when she mm-hmm. was in 2000, the young girl with spina mm-hmm. bifida now runs, is one of the leaders in the school. Isn't yes, she? she is. She What's her has name? the title. Her not, name is Blanky Kukavaskis. And her, her title is secretary, but actually she runs the school. <laughs> isn't that amazing? And she's known it from the beginning. And her her faith grew because there was nothing available for her and so each step of the way because we pray for anything that's going to happen it's a kind of a possible situation unless you include god right and she is a uh, uh, 24 year old now with an enormous faith and still studying to be a lawyer as she works for us as a secretary. Yes. And p- her personal life, her goals in life um, are just amazing. Isn't that wonderful? You had an impact. And she was the first. Yes, and she was the first. As she says, Judy has a lot of grandchildren now, but I was the first. <laughs> Well, uh-huh. Judy, I know it's a Christian-based mm-hmm. curriculum you yes. offer up there, evangelical and outreach, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yes. And so how, when these children come to have faith in Christ mm-hmm. and love Jesus, how, how does it affect? Because I know the community up there is going to be predominantly mm-hmm. Catholic and yes. not maybe evangelical like you and I would Correct. be. Correct. So how do, they, how, do they, how, do, how do they adapt to that, and how does the family adapt to that more, 
vocal, outspoken faith in Christ? Uh, it's a slow process because it is a Catholic village and, and they send their children to our school because they need the special education, not for the Christian education. I got you. But you and just have to give them the Christian education. When they get that's it. right. Because giving them an education without a foundation in Christ won't make them a successful adult. Mm-hmm. They need to know God loves them, has a purpose for their life. Mm-hmm. And put an education on that. That brings success when they, they find his purpose, just like I did. And, uh, and so it, it does just change you. It changes them. I want other people to have what I experienced in my life. And, and that is um, the close walk that, that just brings you closer and closer to Christ and, and more and more effect on the world around you. Well, you have had a profound effect on that village and, and the lives of those yes. children. That's just amazing. Mm-hmm. God put that on your heart just because you went down to visit one time, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden he put that on your heart yes. and trained you as a nurse at Shriners Hospital yes. to be able to handle, the as a nurse, mm-hmm. to be able to hand people that had these uh, mm-hmm. medical or physical disabilities. Yes. So that's just, in that mm-hmm. incredible how God ordained that. Now, you've been there, mm-hmm. you've been down there working for over 20 years Yes, now. 22 years. 22 years. That's fantastic. Now, mm-hmm. I want to highly, re- we here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center at Hotsey Vitamins, we take a portion of our income and we participate mm-hmm. in supporting yes. the New Life School. Now, if you want information about New Life School, you can go to their website, which is, and we'll have it on the screen, it's mm-hmm. ctn.org slash new life slash new life. Mm-hmm. So it's ctn.org slash new life slash. Or you can mm-hmm. go to their Facebook page, which is New Life School Guatemala. And if mm-hmm. you would like to make, uh, and I would encourage you, these poor kids don't have anything. Think what mm-hmm. you and I have and how blessed we are. You can make contributions through Commission to Every Nation, CTN. And you can go to that website, ctenorg slash new life, and you can make your investment in Judy and what she's doing in these kids' lives. Mm-hmm. We're, of course, during this uh, program, you've seen many of the pictures of the kids down there at the school. And this is just a wonderful work. I've known mm-hmm. Judy since <laughs> way back in the uh, mm-hmm. late 80s, and she's been a longtime friend mm-hmm. of ours, Janie and mine. Yes. And we've supported her work and mm-hmm. admire for what she's done. And just thank God for your ministry, Judy. Thank you. <laughs> and besides that, Judy is a guest of ours at the OG of the Wellness Center. Yes, I am. Now, let me ask you this. Do you yeah. think if you had been hadn't been on our program, you'd been able to work down there? How long did, how long do you think it would have lasted? Oh, I would have been gone a long time ago. I, I, <laughs> I was just feeling the old and tired. <laughs> and... Uh, we got and you on coming home. <laughs> and I, when I saw her, and, you know, I've yes. seen her since '89, and then yes. she kind of fell off the program for a while. I said, Judy, <laughs> yes. get yourself back in here. Let's get that. you back on your eating program, yes. get you on your hormones, get you on your vitamins and minerals. Mm-hmm. And she stuck around now it's another yes. eight years. She was talking yes. about retiring back in 2010. Yes. I said, We just need to get yes. you healthy and well. Uh-huh. And you did. And I did. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's amazing. I would recommend it to anyone. Um, well, I just thought it was be- becoming older yeah. and that you couldn't do anything about it. And uh, I was kind of isolated from the information right. of the United States of Texas and, and what was available and, and uh, until you uh, sat you down and, <laughs> sat down and said, Judy, let's get back that's on track. That's right. <laughs> so it's, it, that's that's expanded and in, elongated your, uh, oh. your career. Yes. So we appreciate you and thank you for your mm-hmm. ministry. Thank you for the godly example of your lives. We love you and appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. And thank each mm-hmm. one of you for joining us. Be sure to go look up C as in cat, T as in Tom, E N as in Nancy, C T E N dot org <laughs> slash new life slash new life. I don't know if it's a mm-hmm. backslash or I think it's a forward mm-hmm. slash. 
I'm not sure. <laughs> what is it? Is that a forward <laughs> slash or a backslash? I'm asking my producer. Is that a backslash? Okay. <laughs> so it's ctn.org backslash new life backslash. Go take a look. You'll mm-hmm. be impressed. And I want to encourage you to make an investment in New Life mm-hmm. School in Guatemala. You'll be glad you did. Information provided on this radio program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution radio program advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this radio program is at the listener's discretion.